uh, fade in. We are in the uh, McKinley High School. All the McKinley are teaming with students. Somebody's hanging around. Scan the crowd. Kids are gossiping, flirting, arguing. Before, the, uh, before them comes Millie, walking purposely through the throng. Mm. She carries an open box of colorful donuts. Mm. Passes Nick and Daniel. Daniel casually grabs a sprinkle donut from the box. She spins around. Hey, that's from my French class. Oh, but I love sprinkles. <laughs> Fine, just eat it. <laughs> hey, could I have one too? I didn't have breakfast, you know? I'm starving. <laughs> Billy considers the request and holds out the box. Just take one of the planes, okay? <laughs> Before Nick can grab the donut, Kim and her friend Karen uh, are grossed in conversation. Come by, Karen whacks into the box and knocks the donuts all over the ground. Whoa! <laughs> People are walking here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Billy looks at her dead, uh, dirty donuts on the ground and freaks out like uh, Mia Farrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're all maniacs. <laughs> she runs off down the hall. The freaks can't help but laugh. Nick and Daniel start grabbing the donuts off the floor and eating them. Yeah. What's your problem? My problem is your face dirt bag. They come Daniel, look at Kim. She uh, pulls a chunk of donut out of Daniel's mouth and eats it. Ricky dumped her this morning. She's on the warpath. Oh, so you're telling me she's looking for new customers? <laughs> Shut up, Daniel. <laughs> she shoves a donut back into his face, then it takes off with Karen. Hey, Karen, wait up. Uh, she pushes past a good-looking guy in a perky blonde to stand them as they walk up the hall. Jeez, Perry, you're looking huge. Yeah, I've been working out after some. He <laughs> 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 cracks his arm to flex his bicep for him. Just as Sam comes, uh, Sam and the geeks come around the corner, the guy accidentally hits Sam in the chest with a big thud. Uh, the girl shrieks. Oh, sorry, little guy. Didn't see it. Did I hurt you, sport? <laughs> Sam shakes his head. The good-looking guy and the girl take off. Sam's got the wind knocked out of him. He clutches his chest. Oh, man, that guy hit you in the solar plexus. <laughs> oh, he can't breathe. Uh, are, are you choking? <laughs> Girl hits him on the back. Okay, I'm okay. Don't touch me. <laughs> Gotta watch where you're going. You, you walk right into that guy. Oh, so I should watch where I'm going? Oh, okay. Thanks for the tip, Bill. <laughs> he walks over to his locker. Fellas... My brother sent me this amazing cat set. He looks around, make sure nobody's listening. I propose, after school, we make acid, pour it on the sidewalk, and watch it kill the bugs. Any takers? <laughs> yeah, let's make acid. Hey, Bill, why don't you just announce it over the PA? And Sam's having trouble opening his locker. Suddenly, Karen is behind him, tapping him on the shoulder. She's upset. What are you doing? That's my locker, Tardo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, you're right. Uh... This is my locker. I just I just got hit in the solar plexus. <laughs> I don't want to hear your life story. I want you to move your ass. Was this guy trying to break into your locker? I was I was confused. I thought it was my locker. Yeah, you're very confused, Pee Wee. Are you sure you're even in the right school? You look like you should be in junior high. How old are you? Fourteen. That's a lie. Ring. I am. I'm 14. We all are. Let's <laughs> <laughs> nail the middle and back away. Well, I'd better get to class. <laughs> yeah, see you in second period. We'll take off. <clears throat> you can't be 14. You haven't hit puberty. Whatever. Don't whatever me, midget man. She grabs his shirt and yanks it up, uh, exposing his naked torso. Looks at his armpits. I knew it. You don't even have hair in your pits. <laughs> Come on, Karen. Let's go. You swear you're 14? Then you're a geek. Which one's your locker? Sam points to his locker. She takes out lipstick and writes geek on his locker door. Now you'll always know which one's yours and which one's mine. Okay, geek? Sam stumbles away from his locker. As he walks down the hall, he sneaks a look at his shirt and down and looking at his hairless armpits. He's disgusted with what he sees and shakes his head over the main titles. Act one, we're in the cafeteria. A lot of kids are eating. Lindsay walks away from the food register with her tray. She almost runs into a giggling girl who's being chased by a jock. Uh, she scans the room, looking for a place to sit. She sees the freaks over at a nearby table. So why did Ricky dump Karen? Is she like a prude? Does she not, you know, go the distance? <laughs> <laughs> go the distance. No. <laughs> she's not a prude. She's a slut, obviously. Yeah, obviously, she's a friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this, man? Is this even food? Well, so she was messing around on him, or what? Okay, hey, okay, they broke up. Big deal. Wait, who broke up? Who broke up? People <laughs> <laughs> are so gossipy at this school. You know, it's like, get a life. <laughs>
Kim sticks her finger into Lindsay's pudding and licks it. Lindsay gets upset and grabs, jumps her, jumps to her feet, grabs her tray, and takes it off at another table. What's with her? Over at Lindsay's new table, she sticks her finger. <laughs> Group of leftovers, the uh, girl with the headgear, the overweight kid, and the impish boy who whispers to himself. <laughs> <laughs> running his demons, so Lindsay smiles at them. Hi. She gets no acknowledgement, so Nick comes over and sits down. You gonna sit over here now? I just don't feel like getting abused today. Yeah, Kim's fun, you know, but I, she gets moody. You shouldn't take it personally. Lindsay starts gesticulating. Look, I give up. I go out of my way to be nice, but it's like... Oh, no matter what I do, you know? sleeve caught on the uh, girl's headgear. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the girl says nothing, gets uh, the sleeve off her and takes off. I'm gonna go talk to Kim, okay? No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I mean, it's cool when you hang out. And I don't want her to ruin everything for everybody because... She gets on the rag sometimes, you no, know? No, Nick. No, it, it's okay. No, it's not okay. That's the thing. Well, just not now, okay? Not, not while I'm right here, okay? You do it later. Okay. But I'm, I'm gonna do it. Lindsay nods. Uh, in the hallway, Sam is uh, frantically getting the lipstick geek off his locker. The geek's stand behind him. A defaced locker. A humiliated friend <laughs> and a busty succubus from hell. Perhaps we have left McKinley High and entered the chilling corridors of the Twilight Zone. You're not funny. Dude, I can't believe you smelled your pits. I thought she was going to rape you for sure. <laughs> I thought you guys left. Who we watch from around the corner? Uh, I don't want to add insult to injury here, but I think you should have... Should have what? I don't know. Stood up for yourself, maybe? <laughs> yeah, because you know your locker's right next to hers. Now that she knows you're a wimp, she's going to rip her clothes off every day. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Hit her? Sometimes you got to take the she-bull by the horns. <laughs> Get her in a headlock and wail on her. She's a girl. So then maybe you just fight her like a girl. Yeah, you know, pull her hair, scratch her eyes out. My dad has a rule. You don't fight girls. Well, my dad has a rule. You don't piss your pants at school. <laughs> I don't piss my pants. You guys don't know anything. Suddenly right? Sam's face drops and he sees Karen coming towards him. Hey, what happened to my artwork? Your what? My artwork, shrimp. I spent a long time on that. I, uh, washed it up. How are you going to remember which one's your locker? I'll remember. No, you won't. You're retarded. <laughs> hey, I, I don't want to have a fight with you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was that, Bilbo Baggins? Oh. I, I didn't say anything. It, it was this guy. Are you guys deformed or something? Did you transfer here from Love Canal? I mean, what's the deal? You want to build back up. I'm just going to have to mark this locker again. This time with something permanent, like deep blood. All three of them watch as uh, scattered different directions. Karen watches them flee. Another part of the hallway, Lindsay approaches Daniel. Wait a minute, look who's here. It's Marty Star. It's how Marty. Are you okay? I did, yeah. You got a car accident? Yeah. yeah, that's what happened. Oh. We're fine. Overslept. Oh, All right, let's go. In the hallway, Lindsay approaches Daniel. What are you doing? Uh, Kim wants me to wait for her. She's on the phone with her mom. I said I don't know. Are you deaf? Okay, I'll try. Okay! Sometimes relationships can be a drag. Hmm. Especially if you're going out with her. And anyway, sorry. No, I know. Kim can be cool, though. You just gotta get to know her. Things on the payphone. As usual, my mother's being a total shrew. Ring. Oh, great, biology. I think I have a test or something. See you guys later. Takes off. So, how's it going? What? <laughs> I said, how's it going? <laughs> Fine, I guess. <laughs> what are you doing after school? <laughs> Meet me at the smoking patio. We can hang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it takes off. Lindsay's in shock. Millie comes up. I 
heard about what she does in the yearbook darkroom. What she does? <laughs> you know. What? I don't know what you're talking about. She does it. What do you mean? It? She fornicates it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> She fornicates, okay? I doubt it. So what if she does? <laughs> I just think it's sad. Well, we can't all be Girl Scouts, Millie. Okay. Oh, so you don't even care what she's like? Uh, that she's like a liar and a thief, and she does it in the yearbook darkroom? <laughs> At least she doesn't spend her whole life worrying about what other people think of her. What? Nothing. I gotta get the class. See ya. In the classroom, Western Civ class, pan a group of incredibly bored students who are yawning at the uh, elderly teacher who is droning on. Oops, uh, uh, you are no longer in eighth grade. I expect <laughs> legible handwriting. I cannot spend my time trying to decipher your chicken scrawl. That is not my job. We rest on Sam, who's doing his best to stay alert. Sam's attention turns to the classroom door. Uh, Bill is in the hallway, peering in. He motions for him to come, full of alarm. Sam's troubled. He goes, what? Elder teacher looks over. Mr. Weir. Oh, uh, no, nothing. Bill and uh, ne uh, Neil are gesticulating wildly for Sam to come. Please print clearly and use black ink. Not red, nor green ink, no purple ink, no brown ink, no pink ink. <laughs> yes, he into a panic when the bell finally rings. He jumps to his feet and runs out the door. What is it? You better come quick. Bill leads Sam across the hall. Sam stops dead in his tracks when he sees a few feet away. His locker, written in big black lettering, is the word super geek. Huh? He is uh, it is already a conversation piece. Students are staring at it. Why me? <laughs> that, that's a nickname. If you don't get rid of that, you're going to be called super geek for the next four years. <laughs> Sam quickly uh, opens his book bag and takes out a handful of pens. He settles on a big black marker. Takes the marker, pushes through the crowd, he starts blacking out the words when Kowchevsky comes up. Where? Spins around. What the hell are you doing? Ooh. Oh, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, somebody wrote on my locker. So that's your locker? Yes. No, it isn't. It's the school's lock. <laughs> it's gonna have to be repainted, Bob. But it wasn't me. That's the pen. This wasn't you. Yeah, but... Uh, Karczewski, uh, as he's talking, he uh, inadvertently touches his face with a pen, getting an ink stain on his You kids don't respect your property. You just don't get it. Okay? You're going to write an essay by tomorrow. 500 words. Why vandalism... Why the property of the civilian <laughs> should be respected, and why we should respect it. And if you don't have the essay by tomorrow, you're going to be on trash detail for a week. Where. Got it? Ken nods. Kochevsky takes off with ink on his face. Very satisfied. On the uh, smoking patio, the students are leaving for the day. Lindsay is among them. Lindsay. Lindsay turns. Kim and Daniel are sitting on the, pat uh, the patio together. Nick is also there asleep. Kim gets up and comes over. Where are you going? I don't know. Home? Oh. What are you doing? You want to come over to my house? Uh, look, did Nick say something to you? <laughs> Nick? Didn't he tell you to be nice to me? Oh. Well, yeah, I guess he did. But I just figured since we see each other all the time, you know, we may as well bury the hatchet. So. Do you want to have dinner at my house or not? <laughs> um, I don't know. You know what? Fine. Just forget it. I tried. Starts walking away. Kim. Yeah. Yeah what? <laughs> yeah, I'll have dinner at your house. All right. My parents are jerks, but maybe we can hang out after, you know? Catch a movie or something. That uh, sounds cool. All right, I'll pick you up at your house. Bye, sir. Okay. Jim smiles. Jim smiles back. Mm -hmm. Well, see you at five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> Lindsay walks away. <laughs> she turns back. 
Kim sits on Daniel's lap, gives him a kiss. Uh, Linda smiles for herself, she walks away. <laughs> Act two, in the weird kitchen. Amy is preparing dinner. Sam is looking in the refrigerator. Hey, how was school, sweetheart? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay then. Takes out a Tupperware <laughs> container with leftover pasta, grabs a fork and starts eating. Samuel, you're going to ruin your dinner. I'm loading up on carbs. <laughs> <laughs> but we're having carbs for dinner. You want me to stay a midget? Is that what you want? <laughs> you are not a midget. Yes, I am. Okay, and it's because there's no food in this house. I'm malnourished. Shoves <laughs> a bunch of pasta in his mouth. Food, food, what is all this, huh? Beef jerky, fruit roll-ups? I mean, people in India are malnourished. You're just finicky. <laughs> Mom, is it okay if I skip out on dinner? <laughs> but why? I was invited over to Kim Kelly's house. Sam's mouth drops open. Oh, who's, who's Kim Kelly? She's a friend. Oh, yeah, a new friend. What's she like? Oh, I don't know. She's just this girl. Oh. Kim Kelly's a psycho. <laughs> she and Karen Scarfoli, they're violent. They run around the school being evil. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound very nice. I mean, why do you want to be friends with a girl like that? She's not evil, Mom. She's just different. She doesn't wear frilly dresses or prance around like a cheerleader. Just. Because a girl is strong-willed and speaks her mind doesn't mean she's a psycho. Well, you should have told me yesterday. I'm making veal piccata. <laughs> Maybe another night. Mom, I already told her I would. She's coming to pick me up in 15 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. No, no eat with your friend. You have a good time. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with all this veal. <laughs> this is Gilbert, and we cut to in the weird house. Lindsay's waiting on the lawn for Kim to arrive outside. Sam comes out taking out the trash. I can't believe you're friends with Kim Kelly. Don't talk to me, okay? Kim Kelly's my enemy. Look. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to start being a tattletale and try to get me into trouble, then maybe you better go to a different high school. I don't need some spy reporting on my every move. <laughs> Why are you hanging out with her? Why not? She and her friends tease me. They wrote geek on my lock. Well, maybe you're a geek. Oh, oh. words leave his mouth. Her mouth should have it. It's baseball. Come on, I'm just kidding. Sam says nothing. He hefts the garbage bag and uh, walks back to, uh, to the house where the trash cans are waiting to be loaded. Sam, oh, come on, I didn't mean it. Suddenly a gremlin appears, spinning down the street. The car approaches and comes to a screeching halt in front of the warehouse, hinges away from almost hitting Sam. Hey, move it or lose it. Sam almost in tears, probably drops the, <laughs> drops the garbage bag and runs to the house. Lindsay watches him, feeling sympathetic. Kim honks their horn, waving to Lindsay. Inside Kim's wonderful gremlin, uh, Lindsay hops into the passenger seat. Kim is scowling, clutching her stomach. Oh, man, I got the worst cramps. Thought I was going to die on the way over here. Hey, Kim. What? Can you do me a favor? Can you quit picking on my brother? Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting that he's your little brother. He looks like just all those other geeks. Kim turns up the radio. It's a song she likes. She uh, grins and rocks out to the music as they take off. Uh, inside the weird kitchen, Sam comes in. I hate Lindsay and her stupid friend. You, you don't hate your sister. Yes, I do. She sucks. <laughs> yeah. She does not suck. Sam grabs a banana from the counter, quickly peels it and stuffs it in his mouth. Gene watches him astonished. Inside uh, Kim Kelly's house, Kim's neighborhood, ex outside her house, Kim's na neighborhood is noticeably less affluent than Lindsay's. She lives in a rundown track house. The yard is dead grass and there's a stripped car in the driveway. Kim's gremlin pulls up and parks. Kim and Lindsay get out. Uh, Cookie Kelly, her mom, comes out onto the porch waiting for them. She's pretty but rather hard looking. Kim looks at uh, Lindsay with a uh, fierce intensity as they slowly approach the house. All right. I'm warning you right now. My parents are seriously wacko. Yeah, mine too. Don't worry about it. No. <laughs> They're mental, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. They're looking for a reason to sell my gremlin. They are? They're just, they're such cheap bastards, you know? But I bought the money, I bought the car with the money that my Aunt Kathy gave me, and it's mine. Right. <laughs> Dude, my Aunt Kathy was so rad. She lived in L.A. 
She was in Kojak. <laughs> she doinked Ryan O'Neill at a party. <laughs> wow, she sounds awesome. Yeah, she's dead. She OD'd on Coke. Oh, I'm sorry. So, you see, there's a lot riding on this dinner. I can't lose my car. You get it? I'm not sure if I do. <laughs> All right, my parents hate everybody. They hate Daniel. They hate Karen. The only person they like is you. <laughs> I don't even know them. Well, I've told them all about you. Like, how you're like the golden girl and everything. My mother's going to be pressing you for information. Just, just follow my lead, all right? And remember, I spend the night at your house every Friday. Oh, and last weekend we went to your uh, vacation house in Benton Harbor in the water ski. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you uh, pick up any soda? I forgot. Okay, I'm typical. It's at Kim Kelly's house moments later. Kim and Lindsay are at the dinner table with Cookie and Kim's stepfather, Arlo. Arlo's a burly, <laughs> silent type. And Cookie spends most of her energy suppressing explosive temperament. The cramped house is cluttered and in disrepair. Take out fried chicken is what's for dinner. Uh, Cookie stares at Lindsay uh, while she's sucking on a chicken bone. Kim <laughs> says you're a genius. <laughs> no, I'm not. At all. Kim gives her a kick. I'm kicked. Good grades, I guess. Well, why don't you help out Kim? She's hanging on for dear life. Yes. <laughs> I got good grades. Yeah, well, I don't want to blow your mind, sister, but D's are not good, all right? D's are bad. I got okay? one D, okay? Mm. I told you, my history teacher was a total pervert. <laughs> I wasn't going to go to his house after school to get tutored. Can it, Kim? You're going to wake up Chip. <laughs> Lindsay knows there's a uh, consoler mother Chip asleep on the floor. <laughs> hanging open. What was that? At least I know how to read. Ooh. Oh, sorry. What was that? <laughs> so I hear you girls had a fun weekend. Yeah, it was great. We went water skiing. Mm. I love to water ski. Oh. <laughs> you have a vacation house up there in Benton Harbor? That must be very nice. Family must be very wealthy. Hardly. The kick under the table. I, <laughs> Kim told us you were affluent. Well, we do all right. I, I, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. My father always says a farmer never reveals how many cows he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Father's a farmer? <laughs> no, he owns A1 Sporting Goods. Yeah, can he get us a discount? <laughs> well, we're not rich. As you can see, we don't live in a mansion, we don't have a swimming pool and a tennis court like you do. Mm -hmm. I think you have a very nice house. Thank you, princess. Aren't you the sweetest thing? <laughs> <laughs> Withers under Cookie's weird days inside Sam's bedroom. He's trying to write his essay. Neil and Bill are there uh, playing with the chem set. Ah, <coughs> it smells like a fart. <coughs> Hold this test tube. Yeah, right. What do you think I am, an idiot? Clearly. I'm not gonna get my fingers melted off just so you can get your kicks. I need these fingers. Why, so you can pick up your rumpus all day? Just hold the test. Pick up. I read there's this chemical that eats away your flesh. Pick it. And this kind oh. just got... And this kid just... Damn. And this kid just got a tiny little bit on him and... Now he's going to Disneyland for the last hooray. <laughs> what was the name of the chemical? Uh, I don't remember. This is very important, Bill. What was the name of the chemical? <laughs> I think it was chromium. Chromium? I've got some of that. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a test tube of it up in his face. Bill screams. You better be joking. What was in that? <laughs> it was water, Paz. Relax. You guys, I'm trying to write an essay, okay? Could you please shut up? How many words you got? 33. It's not fair. If I have to write an essay, Karen Scafoli should have to write a big, fat book. She's weird, man. She's a rapist. She's <laughs> What if she comes to school really horny one day? <laughs> uh, girls get raped, Bill, not guys. Guys get raped? No, they don't. Yes, they do. Prisons and 
boarding schools. I would never go to boarding school. I get raped every day. I've never to boarding school. I wonder if he's been raped. I bet he has. It's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. I'd, I'd rather die than get raped. You'd rather die? Yeah, if you get raped, then you go to hell. I don't believe in hell. Well, then go get raped. <laughs> Look, I really need to finish this thing. You know, if it were me, I'd go over to Karen to Foley's house and make her write it. I'm sure you would, tough guy. I would. Dude, you can't let chicks humiliate you like that in public. She didn't humiliate me. Uh, she kind of did. Well, yeah, when she started picking on you, you just ran away, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least I'm not super geek. Bill's eyes widen. There's a deafening silence in the room as they have a stare down. Back at uh, Kim Kelly's house. So, Lindsay, how long your family been had that house in Benton Harbor? Oh, a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did wait. I uh, did waitress up there one summer. I know that area pretty good. Where's your house at? <laughs> oh, um, it's right by the water. Mm -hmm. What what neighborhood? Well, it's near... Um... Mom, Lindsay invited me back up to the house this weekend to go fishing. Oh. Can I go? What street's it on? Benton Harbor Street. <laughs> A long pause, Lindsay gulps the air. A menacing look slowly emerges on Cookie's face. Well, she and Arlo look at Kim, suddenly all hell breaks loose. I knew it. I told you. Lying brat. I'm not lying. You guys just can't believe that I can make a friend who's rich and smart. She's not rich. No, she's rich, I swear. She's a bum like all your other friends. She doesn't know what to do. Kim, Cookie and Kim jump up to their feet. Chip gets up. What's happening? <laughs> it's that car. You're driving around town, tramping it up in that car. I know what you do, Kim. Well, you should. I learned it from you, you whore. What did you call me? You're grounded for good, you hear me? Okay, newsflash, but you're not my father, fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm selling that car. <laughs> nuh -uh. That's my car. I bought that with the money Aunt Ka Kathy left me. Yeah, well, your Aunt Kathy spent a thousand dollars of my money snorting up her nose. No, so as far as I'm concerned, that's my money. You know what? Fine. I'm out of here. Let's go, Lindsay. No, no, you don't. No! You get, get her keys. Give me those keys. Get in the car, Lindsay. We're <laughs> fighting over the car. Give me those keys. Go to the car. Just now. Go. Arlo moves out. They all run out of the, the house outside. Uh, Kim, the Lindsay runs out of the house to Kim's uh, gremlin. Arlo, then Kim, then Cookie follow, all yelling. Lindsay unlocks the car door and gets in the passenger side. She locks the door just as Arlo pounces on the car, banging on the window. <laughs> open the door! Arlo pounds on the window as Kim turn, runs around to the driver's side. She uh, hits on the driver's window. Lindsay! Lindsay unlocks the driver's door. Kim gets in. Uh, Lindsay hands Kim the keys. Uh, she tries to get him into the ignition. You leave here. Oh, you? <laughs> Sorry, you leave here now, you're never coming back. Arlo's banging his fist on the passenger window. Suddenly the window cracks. Ah! Oh my God, hurry! Kim finally starts the engine. The car peels out, knocking Arlo and his fat ass to the asphalt. Kelly's <laughs> <laughs> house, Arlo rises. He watches he and Cookie stand on the street full of fury, watching the gremlins drive into the distance. <laughs> Act three. Uh, inside the gremlin, Kim is pulled over. Lindsay's completely stunned. Uh, Kim is reliving the fight in her head, pounding on the car horn. This is my car. Mine. This is mine. Are you okay? Benton Harbor Street. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've never even been to Benton Harbor. You know, you should have told me where you, you were just using it. Yeah, well, they're always on my ass about where I'm going. She thinks I'm a loser and all my friends are losers. I just wanted to bring home someone like you. I'm sorry, okay? Happy now? Whatever. I wish I'd have known. <laughs> Stepfather wants my car. I think so. With all that dirt I have on him, he better just watch it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you gonna do now? I gotta find Daniel. When he hears about this, he's gonna freak. Starts the engine, they pull out with a lurch. Sam's bedroom, uh, Sam and Neil on the brink of a fight. I hate to break it to you, but you're the geek. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you. All right, I may be some things, but a geek? 
No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make some acid and put it on the sidewalk. Won't that be cool? <laughs> Why don't you watch it? I mean, that stuff's expensive. You're 14 years old and you still play with chemistry sets? It's pathetic. Uh, hey, Nimrod, adults play with chemistry sets, too. Yeah, they're called scientists. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do... I don't know many adults who still play with Tonka trucks. I don't play with Tonka trucks! <laughs> Would you like to go on the record with that thing? I gave my trucks away, like, years ago. He walks over to the closet, pulls out a shoebox, goes with matchbox car. May I direct the jury's attention to you, sir? <laughs> May I direct the Jewish attention to you and your lame impersonation? You thought about teaching a class in geek? Yeah, well, at least I've got hair in my pants. Neil raises his arm, pulls out his hand, and shows off his wonderful armpit. All right, Bill. Who's better, geek? Me or Neil? You decide. Bill, Bill hesitates and looks at them both. I don't know. <laughs> Neil. Come on, Bill, you gotta choose. Locking eyes with Bill, Neil points insistently at Sam. Sam's oblivious. Um, I, I don't know. What does geek mean, anyway? I mean, it's just, it's just a word. Um, yeah, choose! Neil continues pointing at Sam behind his back, making crazy faces. I, I guess. Um... Sam? That's the verdict, is it? <laughs> hey, man, you shouldn't be ashamed. I mean, there's a lot of great geeks in history. Einstein, Gilligan, Gomer Pyle. <laughs> Suddenly, Neil, is mid-sentence, is tackled by Sam. They begin punching and kicking each other. Bill moves to the corner to get out of the way. Sam gets Neil in a headlock. Neil moans. <laughs> Neil, mustering his strength, breaks free of Sam's grip by wrenching Sam's fingers back. Sam screams. <laughs> punching his hand in pain, Neil is flushed with anger. <laughs> Are you done with your little hissy fit now? <laughs> Sam rushes Neil with a fighting yell. He pounces on top of them. They both fall in a heap on the foot of the bed, on top of the chemistry set. Everything shatters. Uh, Neil is pinned down under Sam. Sam's, uh, Neil's eyes are bugging out when he realizes what he's lying. Hey, get off me! Sam notices that his hand has been pierced by broken glass. There's a small cut. Oh, no! Now look what you've done, you jerk! Get off my chemistry set! Neil still webs under Sam, struggles to get free. Bill sees uh, there's something of even, even greater concern. You guys! You guys! <laughs> Bill points to the floor. <laughs> Chemicals are mixed on Sam's carpet now, emanating colorful smoke. They all jump to their feet. What is that? I don't know. Well, make it stop. <laughs> Not touching that. They all watch in amazement. Finally, it uh, goes down. Okay, that's it. Both of you, get out. Uh, we've got to Kim's gremlin that's been driving along. Kim and Lindsay have been trolling for Daniel. She spots Daniel's car parked near a public basketball court. Oh, okay. There's his car. Him and Nick come here to shoot baskets. Kim slows down, scanning for Daniel. Both uh, her and Lindsay's mouth drop open as they see Nick is there shooting baskets. But Daniel's attention is occupied by Karen. They both lean against the chain link fence, shirt, uh, flirting shamelessly. Inside the gremlin, Kim and Lindsay are mesmerized by the betrayal. Out of the basketball court, Daniel traces Karen's lips with his finger, then begins, uh, sticks his finger in her mouth, she sucks on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's gremlin, she looks like hot. Kim? Out of the basketball court, Karen and uh, Daniel are about to kiss, when all of a sudden Kim's car comes barreling towards them, tires screeching, and sticks her head out the window. <laughs> you are dead! Dead! <laughs> She's about to run them down. The gremlin swerves violently away and speeds off. Karen, Kim, and Nick, uh, are, and Daniel are all stunned, speechless. It's uh, they're completely freaked out. Uh, inside Sam's bedroom, Sam is now alone. His hand bandaged, bandaged, uh, picking, stuff, uh, picking up the shattered remains of the chemistry set. He looks at the matchbox, matchbox cars in the shoebox. After a moment, he lifts the shoebox and dumps the cars into the garbage. Outside the warehouse, Sam has made another trip out to the garbage cans. He uh, holds the trash bag with the glass in the back box cars, throws it in the trash. He uh, picks up a Tonka fire truck for one final look, and then he hears a car coming up the, the street. Kim's gremlin speeds up the road. Sam drops the fire truck and races into the house. Kim's gremlin pulls up to the warehouse, coming to an abrupt halt. Inside the gremlin, Kim is a wreck. Maybe it's not what you think. Maybe they were just goofing around. You never know. Suddenly, Kim begins to emit a strange cry, the sound of air escaping from a balloon. <laughs> Gosh, Kim, I'm so sorry. She puts her hand on Kim's shoulders. 
Get off of me, all right? I don't want to see him ever again. Oh, I know. It's just that... He's just... He's such a babe, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's like the hottest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> he's definitely sexier than Rod Stewart. <laughs> he's really good looking, yeah. You're just like every other girl at school, aren't you? <laughs> you want him back again. No, I don't. Don't lie to me! I mean, he's cute, but I'm not looking to bag anyone. He <laughs> is a normal guy, you know? He'll screw anything that moves. <laughs> That's why I, I gotta stay alert, you know? I gotta be a bitch. Just rub, I'm rubs in tears. My life sucks! No, it doesn't. My parents are dicks, I don't have any friends. You're like my only friend. And you're a total loser. <laughs> no offense. None taken. In the weird dining room, Harold, Gene, and Sam are at the dinner table. Sam is scarfing his food down. Sam, slow down. It's not a race. What's the problem? What? He usually never eats. Just look at him. You know who never eats? Karen Carpenter. <laughs> Karen Carpenter never eats. You want her son to look like Karen Carpenter? No, I, I'm just worried he might have worms. Sam, do you think he might have worms? <laughs> no. Lindsay brings in a tearful Kim. Oh, Lindsay, is this your new friend? Yeah, we're going to be in my room, okay? Are you sure you don't want any dinner? No, we're fine. What you eating? <laughs> Veal piccata. That looks good. <laughs> Sit down. I'll get you both a plate. Flops out of the table. Lindsay looks dismayed. Uh, later on in the dining room, Sam's fork reaches in and stabs the last bite of veal. Sam chews the bite. He uh, looks kind of ill. The rest of the weirs are observing Kim as she angrily cuts at her veal. Frustrated, she throws down her fork and knife with a clang. Is everything all right, Kim? She's having problems with her boyfriend, Mom. She doesn't want to talk about it. Kim starts to cry at the table, burying her head in her hands. Harold, sitting next to Kim, grimaces at Gene. Gene motions for him to do something. Uh, Harold pats Kim awkwardly on the back. Yeah. There, there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a guy. Why are guys only interested in sex? You know? It's so sick. <laughs> Where'd you find this piece of work? <laughs> Lindsay mouths not up to her dad. Suddenly an inhuman noise captures everyone's attention. It is the sound of Sam. <laughs> Sam green with nausea and lets out the most contracted burp and the weirs have ever heard. The entire family is astonished. Damn! <laughs> Sam looks like he's about to burp. <laughs> what is it, Sam? Is he gonna blow up? <laughs> Sam runs off from the table, clutching his stomach. That's a perfectly good piece of veal wasted. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think he might have a parasite. Ring, ring. I'll get it. In the kitchen, Jean answers the phone. Hello? Yeah, this is she. In the dining room, Lindsay eavesdrops. Yeah, they're both here. Well, she is? She did? Oh, really? Oh, oh my. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, I, I, no, I see. Okay, okay, well... No, I, well, thanks for letting me know. Okay, yeah, yeah, goodbye. Jean comes back. Lindsay, can I talk to you in the kitchen for a second? Lindsay follows her mom into the kitchen, leaving Harold and Kim alone. You look familiar. Does your, uh, uh, does your family shop at uh, my store? Yeah, but my mom hates going there because it's so overpriced. You know, you can get the same stuff at Winkleman's for a hell of a lot cheaper. That was Kim's mom on the phone. Uh, what's happening? What do you mean? She was yelling at me. She says you're a liar, that you told her we have a vacation house in Benton Harbor. I mean, that you and Kim stay out all night, sleep with boys, and I shouldn't believe a word you say. Mom, none of that is true. Kim had a fight with her parents, and Mrs. Kelly is just upset. Well, now I'm upset, too. Very upset. You don't believe her, do you? You don't think I do stuff like that. No. I mean, I, I barely know Kim. Good. Maybe that's for the best. I don't know if you should be spending a lot of time with her. Mom, try to be a little understanding, okay? 
Kim's from a broken home. Her parents are deranged. Her aunt OD'd on cocaine. Still, I, I don't know. I, she doesn't seem like a very positive influence. Kim pops her head into the kitchen. Thanks so much for dinner, Mrs. Weir. It was really good. You guys have such a killer pad. Do you mind if I, if I hang out for a little while? I mean, my house is such a nightmare. Oh, not at all, Kim. Just make, make yourself at home. She smiles and exits. Do you think she might want some ice cream? Lindsay smiles appreciatively and we go to the fourth pack. In the living room, Kim, Lindsay, Harold, and Jeannie bowls of ice cream gather, gather around the TV. They watch a cop show. Kim's feeling a little bad. <laughs> Gotta hate cop shows. Cops are pigs. <laughs> well, that's a uh, noble generalization, don't you think, Missy? I know a few cops and they're not pigs. I bet they are. My brother got ambushed by two cops. They beat him on the head with their billy clubs. Oh, my. What was your brother doing? <laughs> Nothing. He was just drunk, minding his own business. And the cops just went nuts on him. That's terrible. Yeah. It really messed him up, too. Now he sleeps all day. He never parties. I think he has brain damage. Your family should sue. Believe me, we were going to. I don't know. It was never got around to it. <laughs> In Algeria, they don't have cops. They have uh, something else instead. It's called anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to find those cops and give them brain damage. See how they like it. Give wheels or spoon for emphasis. Uh, how's your ice cream? It's really good, thanks. Ding dong. I'll get it. Lindsay goes to the door and opens it. It's Nick. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, what's going on? Nick points back to a car. Daniel's in the car. He wants to talk to Kim. I'm not sure if now's the best time. She's really mad. Yeah, yeah, I bet. In the living room, Kim peers her head around and sees Nick. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Harold and Jean are uh, aghast. What do you want? Daniel wants to talk to you. What are you, his chore boy? No. <laughs> well, why don't you tell your master that I don't ever want to talk to him again? He's scum. You can tell him yourself. He's outside. I'm not going out there. Forget it. He can go to hell. Well, you know, if you don't go out there, he's just going to come in here, so... <clears throat> Maybe you should just talk to the boy? <laughs> just, you know, tell him how you feel. I'm never going to talk to him ever again. So you can all just bite me. <laughs> he runs, into the, out of the, runs from the room into the house. Uh, everybody is stunned. She's not sleeping over, is she? <laughs> in Sam's bedroom, Sam is feeling ill sitting at his desk attempting to write an essay. Kim enters the room, uh, spins around and knows the Sam for the first time. You scared me! Sam's confused. He watches Kim go to the window and peer out. She sees Daniel is parked in his car. Uh, he gets out and approaches the house. In the bedroom, uh, Kim quickly closes the curtain and she sits on the bed. Uh, could you please leave? I'm writing an essay. Hey kid, do me a favor and shut up. <laughs> I've got a lot on my mind. Isn't it enough that you torture me at school? I mean, do you have to show up at my house, too? I don't torture you. Yeah, you do. You and Karen Scafoli? It's because of her I have to write this stupid essay in the first place. Oh, yeah? Well, it's your lucky day, then, because Karen Scafoli is dead. She is? <laughs> Tomorrow morning. I'm going to snuff her out. You are? Don't worry about Karen. I'm going to get a wrench, and I'm going to pull her teeth out one at a time. Seriously? <laughs> or maybe I'll break her arms. Or maybe I'll just take a match and light her little hair on fire. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, don't hurt her too bad. I'm gonna do something. Just wait. She's gonna wish she was never born. Cool. In the hallway, Lindsay Nicker in the hallway looking for Kim. Kim! Hey, Kim! This is awful. Don't stress, you yeah. know. They'll work it out. They always do. Yeah, but she's really pissed. She's always pissed. She's Kim. Yeah, we, you're right. This night has been really intense. You see Nick exchange a sweet smile, but the moment is interrupted by a blood pressure. In the kitchen, Kim is the source. Standing by the sink with a sponge in her hand is startled by Daniels entering the back door. Lady, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just looking for <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lindsay, I saw the door was open, so... Who's this punk? Dad, this is Daniel. He's a friend of mine from school. Jesus, kid. 
Uh, you ever heard of the doorbell? <laughs> People have heart attacks, you know? Sorry, Pops. <laughs> Where's Kim? She doesn't want to see you. Kim pops up. That's right. So get out of here. Kim, you let me explain? God, I hate you. Can you just calm down and not be a bitch for one second? What did you call me? Kim grabs an ice cream bowl from the counter and hefts it over her head. Carol grabs it just in time. It is not what you think, okay? Don't, Daniel. You know what? Don't lie. I know that you slept with her. Are you high? You're probably screwing every girl in school. Admit it. Just admit it. I didn't even touch her. Yeah, gun bay starts looking through the pantry, grabs some fruit roll-ups. <laughs> I saw her sucking on your finger. What else of hers? What else of yours has she sucked on? Jesus Maybe you two Christ. should discuss this. <laughs> she was all over me, all right? I was trying to be nice to her because she's your friend. But I got no interest, you know? She's a slut. Yeah, she's the biggest slut at McKinley, Daniel. Yeah, I know. She's gross. <laughs> you think she's gross? <laughs> yeah. Mom? Yeah. Lindsay motions for her parents to get out. Harold and Jean take the hint. In the dining room, Harold and Jean and Lindsay and Nick are gathered. Uh, Nick is unwrapping a fruit roll-up. Mom, Dad, this is Nick. Oh, hey, Mr. Weir, Mrs. Weir. It's, it's really nice to meet you. Lindsay's great. You did a great job with her. She turned out really, she turned out great. Thanks. Hey, do you, do you mind if I have one of these? No, no, go right ahead. You promise you'll never hang out with her again? I swear. I don't like her, you know? I like somebody else. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, you moron? You. <laughs> I think they've made up. <laughs> Let's go check on them. No, Mom. Oh, Lindsay, I think we deserve to see a happy ending, don't you, Harold? Are these friends of yours going to be leaving our house? <laughs> She walks into the kitchen with the others in tow. Her girlish smile disappears when she sees the scene from the postman. Daniel has Kim backed up against the kitchen table. They have a salacious, sloppy kiss. Kim moans. Oh my. They <laughs> back out of the entryway. Uh, in the house, outside, uh, the front door opens. Nick, Daniel, Kim are finally leaving. They spill out of the lawn. Everybody lingers in the doorway. Uh, Mr. Weir. I just want to tell you, I really, uh, I really dig your store. You got a lot of great stuff in there. Holds up the box of fruit roll-ups. Do you mind if, it, do you mind if I take this? <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's fine. Kim gives him a smile. <laughs> it was really nice to meet you guys. Thanks for dinner and, and the ice cream and everything. Good luck with your parents. Oh, God, don't remind me. Listen, do you think I could leave my car here? I'll pick it up tomorrow. Hey, maybe we can hang out. You know, what are you doing for dinner? I'm not sure. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Weirs react to this and they all head off. In the weird living room, Harold shuts the door decisively. Uh, everybody's looking at Lindsay. Lindsay? Who were those people? Of Lindsay's disarmed smile, we go back to the high school. Uh, Sam is walking through the, the hallway. He runs into Neil. They have a momentary silent standoff. Hey. Hey. You going to class? Yeah. They walk together. Karczewski comes up. Sam, where? Where's that essay? Sam holds out a piece of paper. Karczewski scans it. He looks pleased. Mm. You know what we're going to do with this? We're going to post it on your locker so everyone in McKinley can learn from your mistake. <laughs> Sam and Neil follow Kopchevsky to Sam's locker. They all stop in their tracks when they see Karen standing before her locker. The word slut has been painted down the front of it. Kim is outraged. I give up. He crumples up Sam's essay and walks off. Uh, Karen turns on Sam, gives him a menacing look. Did you do this? Sam, frightened, shakes his head. Karen retracts her arm, about to punch him, then all of a sudden... I did it. <coughs> Karen, they look, they see a uh, Kim and Okay. <laughs> because you are a slut, and if you ever hit on my boyfriend again, I will kill you. Karen, petrified, backs away, turns and quickly uh, exits. Uh, Sam, brimming with satisfaction, approaches his new friend. That, that was really cool. Thanks, Kim. She shrugged. No problem, geek. <laughs> walks away, <laughs> and doesn't know what to think, fade out, and true.